Hello maths fans, welcome to question number four from Tom Rock's Maths and I Love Mathematics. Thank you everyone for sending your questions in and thanks as always for voting. The winning question this week is what is the best way to win at the board game Monopoly? A great board game and also a great question because who doesn't want to win when they play Monopoly? There are many ways that you can think about this question of how to improve your chances of winning because Monopoly is a very strategic game and there's lots of elements. There's things to do with money, there's strategies, there's probabilities involving dice. So there's all kinds of maths and all kinds of ways you could think about this question. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep it nice and simple and just give you one really top tip in order to maximise your chances of winning next time you play. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you which colour property you should buy. If you're only going to buy one full set of properties or aim for one colour property that you're going to complete the set of, and we do want a complete set here because once you own all the properties of one colour, of course, then you can buy houses and hotels and that's how you get the big bucks. So if you only buy one colour, it probably makes sense to buy the colour of property that is landed on most often. And this is where maths can help us. So on a Monopoly board, you have 40 squares in total. I've broken it down here. So you have 28 properties. We have three chance squares, three community chess squares, two tax squares, income tax and luxury tax, I believe. And then there's the four corner squares. So there's go, there's jail, there's go to jail, and there's free parking. So if it was equally likely to land on any of the 40 squares, two and a half percent of all turns would end up on any particular square. So you could just pick any square that you wanted and say, right, two and a half percent of all turns would land on this square if it was the case that it was equally likely to be on any square on the board. This is, of course, not the case for many, many reasons. The main one being there are chance cards and community chest cards which will send you from what the square you're on to a different square and that's still within your turn and then of course there's the go to jail square which if you land on it you then go to jail so the go to jail square may as well be the jail square in a game of monopoly somewhere between four and six percent of all turns will end up on the square jail so jail is the most visited square on a monopoly board doesn't really help us yet because, of course, you can't buy jail. So what we can do, though, is work out what is the most likely square that you will then move to once you've been in jail and use that to our advantage in terms of buying our properties. So what we need to know is what is the most likely number you will roll on a dice and then count that many squares from jail and use that to help us decide which colour property we should buy. And I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going to roll lots and lots of dice and I'm going to record the numbers that I get. So as you can see, I'm going to do a first person view of the experiments. You know I'm not cheating. So I've decided I'm going to do three at a time and then write them on the board so it's a bit quicker. gentlemen was maths in action. I hope it wasn't too boring but what we do have is this beautiful table, beautiful chart representing the results of 105 rolls of two dice. Now as you can see I got a lot of sevens, eights, six was also quite popular but mainly seven and eight they're the sort of dominating numbers here and that is what we expect. This is probability sort of showing its head in real life experiments. And the reason these numbers in the middle are the most common 
is because they have the highest number of ways of summing to that number with two dice. So let's start with the first number, number two. So I didn't roll a single two. The reason for that is to get a two when you're rolling two dice, you've got to get a one on dice one and a one on dice two. So that's only a one in 36 chance. So really I should have got three or so total, but again, it's, it's an experiment. There's going to be errors. It's not going to quite work exactly. So to get a two, you need one plus one. So one plus one. Now to get a three, you can get a one and a two, or you could roll a two on dice one and a one on dice two. So you need a one and a two, but there's two ways of doing that. What about four? Well, we could have a two and a two. We could have a one and a three or a three and a one. And if I continued like this, following the same pattern, just thinking about how you can make that number using two dice, we should hopefully get a very similar looking distribution, a very similar looking shape as to what I got in the real experiment in my tally chart. Now I've completed the chart with all the possible combinations of rolling two dice that you need to get the numbers from two through to 12. And as you can see, they match really well. And this is just probability in action. This is sort of a real life representation of what probability means mathematically. Because to get a seven, for example, there are one, two, three, four, five, six different ways to roll a seven. And so of all the different possibilities when you roll two dice, of those 36 different combinations, six of them will give you a seven. So one sixth of the time, you would expect to get a seven. And then for six and eight, they both have five different combinations. And so five out of 36 rolls, you would expect to get a six or an eight. So they're the next most popular numbers. And you can see this in our distribution. Of course, it doesn't quite match perfectly. And that's because the full probability here, the more rolls you do, the more likely it is to match perfectly. So if I'd done a thousand rolls instead of 105, it would look a lot similar in shape. Now back to Monopoly, the, the purpose of this demonstration of our question. So if you remember, we found that jail is the square that a player is most likely to land on during their turn. And then we wanted to figure out what is the, the most likely roll next time they get to go. And we actually found from my experiment to be eight. But if you look at the general distribution, it should be seven according to probability. But if you move seven spaces from jail, you actually land on a community chess square. So again, another square that we can't buy. But the next most likely roll of the dice are six and eight. They both have five possible ways of making six and eight with two dice. We actually saw in my experiment that eight was the most popular. So it's a good bet. And if you move either six or eight spaces from jail, you land on the orange properties which is great. So six spaces from jail is an orange property. Eight spaces is an orange property. The third and final orange property that you would need to be able to buy those houses and hotels, get those big bucks, is on space nine. So it's nine spaces from jail. And again, looking at our results and the expected result, nine is also quite likely to be rolled. So next time you play Monopoly, buy those oranges. It's all about the orange properties, buy all three, get the houses down, get the hotels down, because people are most likely to land on those squares. And so if you own them, you're gonna be the one taking their money and you're gonna hopefully maximize your chance of winning the game. Thanks everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to subscribe to my channel if you like what I'm doing. If you want more maths related fun, check out my website, tomrocksmaths.com. You can also follow me on Facebook at tomrocksmaths. Same handle for Twitter and Instagram. And please do keep sending in your questions and keep voting. The next vote will be up shortly. Thank you.